maybe gold you can see, but gold atom you cannot see. Then what you cannot see, why do you want to bother about it? That is a very simple, I think, obvious question which most of you will be asking. What is an abstract science? Why do you want to study? Right? Now, the question for us is the molecules around us, what we are seeing around us, it has a purpose. And whatever we are seeing around us, it is made up of molecules. So that is why this sentence says molecules in and around us. So before going to that, if you have any questions, maybe we can take or maybe I can proceed and whenever you have questions, you can always come back. When I say molecules in and around us, the first thing is our human body. What is our human body made of? Can you keep it louder? Yes. Huh? Yes. Very good. Okay. Anything else in terms of chemistry? So 23 different kinds of atoms. Different atoms. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So now, when I say molecules in and around us, when I make a statement, the chemical molecules is all pervading and everything around us is made up of chemical molecules. Around us means that is also including us. I am not wrongly saying that because if you look at the human body, 42 pages of our human body is made up of water. Actually, most of the human body is consisting of water. That is why, you know, maybe you can, you can live without food for some time, but you cannot live without water forever. You see, there are many people who die of thirst, but there are people who can endure hunger for some time, but not without water. Because, there is a water balance which is required in the body and anything which is coming less, you have to add water. So most of our body is made up of water. Along with water, you have fat, that is around 12 kgs, that is the next. You have protein, that is coming next. Then you have what is known as a glycogen, phosphorus, calcium and the calcium is what we, our bones are made up of and we have Elements like magnesium, chloride, chloride, iron, zinc, potassium, sodium, and others. So if you look at it very simply, water again is a molecule, chemical molecule. So in this way, if you see, our us, everything is made up of water, and the essentially there are six elements which are made up of. For example, starting from oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. So these are the elements which our body is made up of. And what you call as a cells, they are also directly responsible for this. Along with these six atoms, well, what we have, there are also other elements which are present, maybe all these are present like around one gram, one percent. But there are some things which are present less than one percent, like a potassium, sulfur, sodium, magnesium, copper, zinc, selenium. So these are the other elements and there are some trace elements which are also present which I am here. So you don't have to really try to bother what is it. But it just to give you an understanding that our body, our physical body is made up of elements. And these elements what I am saying is oxygen present independent, hydrogen present. I also told that that possibility does not exist. In what form they present? They are present as water present as proteins, they present as fats, and they present as carbohydrates, and they present as some dissolved inorganic ions, and they present as gases, and they present as amino acids, and they represent as a free ions. So these are the other different types of the, uh, I mean the elements are present in this form in our body. Now, the obvious question you see when every one of us will have is, Okay, you have a body, fine, but will the body live on its own? Why do we take food? Why do we take water? Why do we take, uh, you know, sometimes if you are dehydrated, you take some 
they have uh, they had to get in this and all these things where do we take? Because and also for sustaining where do we require? When you look at what we take inside food, what we take inside is nothing but food. So nobody is going to take anything harmful. This till if you look at it, there are several things starting from protein, carbohydrates, fats, and then you go for fiber. And what is coming out in this whole thing very distinctly is what is vitamins. Most of the carbohydrates and everything, they are also present in our body. But what is not present in our body, but what is required of proper our body, is what is vitamins. The difference between vitamins and other dietary nutrition says, you require other things, but what is most required is vitamins. The reason is, for example, cholesterol is there. So if people, if you have wherever you require, you also take cholesterol inside to make your uh, I mean, the cells made. But cholesterol, our body also can make. But what body cannot make is vitamins. The vitamins cannot be made. If body cannot make vitamins, is it okay not to have vitamins? So this is one typical question which we have. And why it is so important for us to talk about this vitamin series? First of all, these vitamins are nothing but organic compounds, molecules around us. That is why, from a chemistry perspective, it is important. But what is very important from the point of view of vitamins is, these vitamins are essential for our living, for our body to maintain itself. For example, it is required by body for proper function. And is one vitamin enough? So can anybody name how many vitamins are there? Or can anybody name what are the vitamins, which vitamins you know? Which one? Little bit louder. I think... Uh, one of you can stand up and say, yes. Please stand up and say. I think, see, since vitamins is something, it is always creates a fight between a child and a mother. The reason is, mother will say, eat fruits, but you will say, you want to go to McDonald's, right? And mother will say, when a small child is there, you, you know, uh, I want to put vitamin drops. The child will throw it, spit it out. So this is what you saw, is like a big fight between a mother and child, always there with regard to vitamins. So now, when I say you have so many vitamins, and there are few of the vitamins I have given here. For example, for our bones, there is something called a vitamin D. For, for our good eyesight, there is something called vitamin A. You know, so what is present in citrus fruits? Maybe this is the only one I think which everybody will like because it tastes good. Vitamin C. And you also have a large number of B vitamins. So these are all broadly the number of vitamins which are present, which are actually required. And each one of them has a different thing. For example, vitamin C, if somebody has a cold, instead of going for medicine, they will say, why don't you take vitamin C? Now, if we need go and read these vitamins also, there are some different types. And the next two, three sides may be much more descriptive in nature, so don't give so much of importance to that. But this is only the information because which you, many of you may like to have it. So in these vitamins, you have something called fat-soluble vitamins and you have water-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins are the ones which normally you have to go on giving because the moment you take, they will go directly to the blood stream and they will be washed away. So you have to go on eating. Fat-soluble vitamins, the moment you take, it will go to store in the body. So you don't have to do take every day. So for example, A, D, E and K are called fat soluble vitamins which are normally once you take, they are stored. And in this, important thing is vitamin A. So vitamin A is the one which is responsible for our eyesight. And vitamin B 
he is responsible for the formation of the bones. So this is also very good, very, very helpful and very important. And I have also given one of the sources. And one thing which is very common, which is coming with most of the vitamins is milk. So the dietary, the dairy products, which we normally use, they are very rich in vitamins. That is why many of the time our parents force us to take milk because of uh, these things. And also vitamins A, maybe I will sometime, after some time I can elaborate it with more. They also act as a powerful antioxidant. I will talk about it a bit later. Then you have a vitamin E. So this is the one which causes, which forms the red blood cells. You know, many times, uh, many of the, many of us go through a phase where we become very anemic. That means our RBC count, our red blood cells count, go out long. So that is why you require vitamin E. And you also have a very important thing called vitamin K. So which is actually, for example, when you have a blood. So as long as it is a form of the body, it is fine. But the moment you have a cut, it is very important that the blood cannot go on flowing. If it goes on flowing, what will happen is you, by the, there is a possibility of death due to blood gaining. What it happens is, the moment you have a cut, you will see, observe it very carefully. Within no time, it gets actually clotted and actually the blood, the blood flow stops. And what is important for that is vitamin K. So the vitamin K is very important as far as clotting the blood is concerned. And along with this, these are all fat-soluble vitamins. So you take this, they are stored in our body, and you